I'm pretty sure I have not been pronouncing these German w words for the floor names correctly. I'm thinking now that the, after Googling some stuff, that the te at the end of the numeral number is what makes it numeral, kind of like the uth we add in English for all numbers above four or greater than or equal to four to make them new to make them ordinal. So it's not it's so you pronounce them something like um derstaboden, not derstboden, derstaboden, um zweite stock and drite stock. Yeah, and, and it's I think it's um Zweite stock, that W sounds like a V, like Wagner. Anyway, um, I'm still confused about the floors because I thought it was supposed to go, the floors were actually numbered top to bottom, unlike the, how they would be numbered in a building. So, Erste Boden is the, the, the highest floor, and then you go down to Zweiste stock, and then down to Drite stock. So when they say they're on the third floor, that means they're on Drite stock. And when Sora described the condition of each floor, um, kind of at the mid of the first day, she went from the top down. So Erste Boden is completely flooded, and that's why they can't get out, because they can't get through Erste Boden. Uh, Zweiste, Zweiste, um, stock is the one where there's one continuous region not flooded. D-tray stock is where there's two and where they're hanging out the control room as in D-tray's Drite stock, which is the lowest level because that's where the you are here was located on the screen. But then when they went to fix the generator, they went down, which yes, the generators you'd think would be out the sea floor, but they went down to another floor as if they were in the second floor from the bottom. And I, I just, I still haven't figured out that. And I might be able to if I went back and watched old footage I recorded, but this is a mystery game. And according to my mystery game rules, you can't go back and rewatch old footage unless to make sure that there wasn't a mishap in the recording process. So, yeah, I'm maybe, it's like, am I, it's like, am I an idiot or something here? Like, I don't get what, how that worked. I also didn't get how they went, they, they, the generator room was apparently in one of the areas they couldn't get to on the set, on the third floor, the floor they were on, the floor with the conference room and the control room, but they could get there by going down a floor. It's like, which floor is the generator room on, right? Is it somehow on both floors? I mean, the floors are separated by somewhere around 30, 45 feet of water. Was the only thing spanning them like these emergency stairs shafts and abutments. So, whatever. Also, why couldn't they just use the stairs? Why they'd use the elevator? I mean, it would be explained if they had to go all the way down to the ocean floor, but they didn't appear to need to do that. Yeah. So, something weird happened there. Also, the localization sometimes um, leaves it as ditre, uh, drite, drite stock, and sometimes translates it to third floor and doesn't necessarily be consistent. Maybe it's just because the characters translate the Drite stock into Japanese and say the Japanese for third floor, so they decided when they made the English localization, they would make it English. Given that the English localization is riddled with all kinds of crazy mistakes, so I don't really trust them to do anything right. Particularly Yu's name, which I think is Yubi Sai Harukana. Or Sei Hiro Sei Harukana, you be Sei Hiro, you be Sei. There's a reason why they don't make you say this. You be Sei Harukana. That starts with a U, which is just one. If you were to write that in hiragana, which they don't, it's written in kanjis. That would just be written as one hiragana, and they translate. They but they transliterate it to Y O U, which might just be ignorance on English pronunciation by the translators or just them being weird and or it could be just accidentally giving a plot reveal on a Japanese pun early. I'm still not sure. I'm starting to change my opinion that it's some sort of pun and I'm now thinking more that it's just a mistake as I'm going through the game. Okay, let's go into the game.
You! It does make it kind of entertaining, though. Hey, you! It was strange. I thought that maybe she wasn't on that floor. Just then, Sora's voice came to me from the voice converter. Kid, it's me, Sora. I know where you is. She is fine, of course. Huh, where is she? Zwaite stock in the security office. Security office? Why is she there again? I don't know. You contacted me about with her whereabouts. Yeah, you contacted me about with her whereabouts. I got it. Well, I'll go to the warehouse as well then. No, that will not be necessary. Why not? Fortunately, to the extent that I have been able to investigate, there is no major damage. Well, but those characters, Takeshi and Tsumugi went there, and so there's probably some plot thing that goes on, interaction between Takeshi and Tsumugi that you might experience if you play as Takeshi, which might require some dramatic tension. So, although Sarah said that, Sora said that, I don't trust it. Sora added that there were enough people to do the required work. It would be better for you to go to Yu's location. So, where Yu is? Yes, something is strange there. Strange? I can't say for sure, but I sent something. Maybe you was doing something weird there. So I think that someone should go investigate. Can't you see, like, with eyes? Can you simulate, like, don't you have, like, cameras everywhere? Wouldn't it be better if you went instead of me? If something were strange, I didn't know what I could do. I'm sorry, unfortunately, now I must go to the control room. Control room? Is something else wrong? Oh no, I have to do a little maintenance on the mid. I see, that's... baloney feathers. Something else is going on. I'm sorry, but do you think you can manage it for me? Sure, I don't have anything better to do. I'm off to check on you, the security office, right? Yes, thank you. I climbed to the second floor via the emergency stairs. Yeah, right, he had to climb up to Zwaite stock. Or Zwaite stock. Oh, I... Well, at least everything's back to how I understood it before. It's just the generator fixing scene that didn't make sense. I called to you via the intercom on the side of the security office door. You? It's me. Can I come in? Huh? Kid? After a bit, the door opened. What's up? What are you doing here? He was unable to hide her surprise. Sora was right. Strange might have been the word for it. Sora told me to come. Sora? Sora? Yeah, uh, she, um... She said that something was strange and that she wanted me to take a look. I couldn't think of a better way to put it and blurted out the truth. Uh, is this a bad time? You slumped her shoulders as if defeated and heaved out a sigh. <sighs> oh well, I guess that's how it goes. If you think about it, Sora has ears everywhere. Well, quit standing there, come on in.
All right. You want some coffee? I followed you into the room. It smelled like hot coffee. In a corner of the room was an ancient siphon coffee machine percolating up dark liquid. You offered me a chair, and I sat down. She turned to the coffee maker to pour coffee. What are you up to in here? I asked you this bluntly as I leaned back in the chair. I'm looking into something. Looking into something. White steam curled into the air from where she was pouring the coffee. Is this something that you have to hide from everyone? I thought it came out a little too accusatory. Maybe I was a little peeved at that she was hiding something from us. Here's your coffee. Well, it appears that in Japanese, coffee is not a loan word. That, that, that means something to me because in Korean, it's a loan word. It's like copy. She turned back towards me with a white cup in each hand. She headed one to me. It's hot, so be careful. Oh, thanks. A white cup, white steam. Only the liquid inside was black. The Moo's logo was printed on the cup. Well, where should I start? You sat down next to me and took a sip of her coffee. Then she gradually started to talk. I told you before, right, how I got, a, how I got this job at, in, at Lemieux? Yeah, it's to find what happened to her father. It's a very familiar plot. I'm looking for clues about my father who disappeared. I nodded. He went missing 17 years ago, and I came hoping to find a hint as to why. Because everything happens in 17, it was exactly the year 2000. You said that the last place he was seen was in Lemu, right? If you're writing ever 17, if you can't decide how big some number is going to be, just make it 17. Oh, are you investigating that? So. Yes. You nodded and shifted the cup to her other hand. Information about my father. It was 17 years ago. They said they say there was a big accident here. And this exact thing happened a second time. It was replicated. Accident. Uh, 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 that's kind of big spoilers for some other games. So I don't know if I really want to say it. It's like they're trying to figure out. Uh, I'll say it, but I won't say which game it is. But it's unfortunately, it could spoil things, even though I didn't say which game it is. They're trying to figure out how her father could have not died by going through the same situation again. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's. I don't think that's a copy of that. This is the similar sort of like because I, you know, I know about other games and their plots, and I start like. Maybe it's something kind of, sort of like that, you know? Because it's like, well, a big accident happened just now, too. You, anyway, even looking at old news clippings, I wasn't able to gather much information. What do you mean? The cause of the accident, specific damage, what happened after all, all that coverage was vague because, of course, the pharmaceutical company covered it up because it's a pharmaceutical company. I figured that the media didn't really know the details about what happened either. Somebody or something powerful clamped down on information. Hmm, that's interesting. 
The accident 17 years ago shrouded in mystery. And my father that disappeared 17 years ago. I wonder what the trope namer is for this. It probably would be the, uh, what do you call it, the DL6 incident? Yeah, maybe it's the D, maybe it's DL6. Anyway. I mean, like, like the, um, the poster child for, oh, there was an incident this many years ago, and then what happened, how we solved this incident is related to how they solved, related to the details about this past, inc past incident, and maybe there's parallels between the two, or relatives between the two, or one of the characters is, to pre previously participated in that other one and is an old now and was young then and yeah uh, but I mean Sora would know but uh, none of the other characters are really that old um, Tsumugi is described to be a high school student she would have to be like a baby at the time of this incident still he worked here until right before the accident <laughs> I can guess about some of what happened from what we already know. You think that the accident has something to do with the disappearance of your father. So you cut up. You well that would make sense. Kokoniwa Deminiwa Otoza no Konsekinga no Kotera Hats So Motte Watashiwa Yatekita. I thought that here that is that that in Lemi there would be some trace. That's why I came. Demo Zisani Hadaraki das de Mirito. But since I started working, I haven't had any time to look into it. Instead, I've been trying to pick, pick up random boys that are confused and have amnesia sitting on benches in the rest area. I couldn't even get close to Lemir's database, but database is a lone word. I guess it makes sense. I was pretty naive. However, now you have an opportunity because of the situation you're in. The chair squeaked as you slumped back in it. She just stared at the ceiling. But, but you know, opportunity knocked, just like I said. Opportunity. You don't mean this accident. Yep. You place the cup next to the console. Now I have access to the mid. Thanks to the accident, I have been able to get a step closer to my goal. And I am behind it all. No. Well, that wouldn't be surprising. Well, I suppose it has also put my life in danger, but... You joked as she shrugged her shoulders. I'll ask you one more time, but did you have to keep it all secret? That's a toughie. I mean, I work here, but I don't have any authority. It's just a part-time gig. Taking advantage of this accident to gain access to secret information in the Mu. Normal, you might call this cracking. A kind of looting, maybe? So you got up. That's right, stealing information. It's a pretty decent crime. But I suppose there is no way I could have kept it hidden. Sora knows everything that goes on relating to Lemme. I think that she would understand your situation if you explained it to her. You growled as she put the cup to her lips. Hmm, I wonder about that. I took I too took a sip of coffee. It was super bitter and super thick. So, did you find anything out? Sorega. 
That's, that's the problem. Saying that, you started manipulating the keyboard. One of the monitors on the wall shifted from footage of an observation camera to an image of a computer desktop. In the middle of it, one window was open. You explained as she stared at the screen. This is the authorization screen, maybe it's terminal in the Japanese, which would have been a perfectly fine word to use, to contact the network. Authorization screen? This is where the system assesses the user for proper authentication. Most people just call that, this is where you type the password in. I felt like I kind of got it, but not really. Attempting to co connect to Lemis C level, meaning I'm trying to a nice pun C level, meaning I'm trying to access classified information. So is Below C level, less or more classified. I mean, the numbering of the floors goes down as you go lower, goes up as you go lower, right? So, well, whatever. But if anyone could easily access important data, it would be a security disaster, right? Okay. That's why there is a screen where the computer asks, hey, Who's trying to look at this? As she spoke, you used the mouse to click on the box for name. Inside the box are written the words Yuki Tanaka. Now, yeah, inevitably Sara is going to be here and she's going to crack this. I don't know when that's going to happen, but it's going to happen in probably only one of the endings. And that might be the you ending. Of course, there is no way I could access the system using my name, so I'm using someone else's name to get me in. But anyone might think to try that, right? This is a very long, winded explanation for why passwords exist. I suppose so. Obviously, the people who program this aren't stupid, so to prevent authorization, they have methods to check people's identity and I got distracted by how it's spelled as password with only one S on the screen, which you might think maybe that's German, but name is not German, so I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, so to prevent false author to prevent false authorization, they are methods of check people's identity. <laughs> The screen then says, if you really are Yuki Tanaka, please show me your password. You then use the mouse to circle around the box for password, this time spelled correctly. It was still blank. And what about the password? Working on that right now. What, you don't know it? I don't know it. Well, if I were to take a guess, it's probably Tanaka Yubi Sei Harukana. It's probably her name, just carrying things over from this genre. I have no, no better guess. Or, Sar gets around it, or, there's another likely possibility, you discover it in someone else's besides you's route. 
So you haven't looked up anything yet. It's not that I haven't, I haven't been able to, I haven't been able to get in. So you're stuck. Yep, stuck. You nodded and gave me a big sigh. After a second's pause, you was back tapping at the keyboard. There's nothing for me to do, I just sat there watching you do her thing. The password blank filled as she typed. The digits she typed were blocked out by stars so that anybody watching wouldn't know what the word was. You tapped the enter key. Access denied invalid name or password. So you immediately tapped into another line of letters. She tried password, then she tried password one, two, three, then she tried password backwards. Tap. Access denied invalid name or password. Hey, you. Nani? Nani? I was just wondering, who is Yuki Tanaka? Looking at the name, I was wondering if she's a relative or something. She's my mom. Your mom worked here? Works. She is working here, as in the present tense. Hey, your mom researches archaeology, right? You said something about it yesterday, I think. Yeah, so what? You answered her eyes still glued to the computer. But archaeology has nothing to do with theme parks, right? My thoughts exactly. But I figure that Lemu could probably offer her a lot more money than some small university research department with next to no budget. Is Lemu doing some kind of archaeologi archaeological research? Well, at least it is pretending to. It seems like they are doing a survey related to the ruins of the Lemurian continent. I just suddenly realized now that the singer who sings the opening song, her voice sounds an awful lot like the voice actor for Sora. <laughs> anyway. Near the end of the 20th century, some oceanic ruins were discovered near Okinawa, right? Leibelic Pharmaceuticals st spread rumors that these ruins somehow were evident, evidence of the existence of Lemuria. Your Okinawa? They have poured loads of cash into the archaeological survey of the sea floor. That's a long ways away from Madagascar, and there's land masses in between. I have no idea what the company is up to. Your mom was involved in that project too? Apparently, but I don't know the details. I think it is all just an act. I think she's just taking the money and researching something else. Something else? I told you yesterday, didn't I? The ancient idea of the third eye? Your mom sounds tricky. Well, she is. Still, I think I understand how she feels. 
レムリア大陸の痕跡なんか見つかるわけないんだから。それが不毛だってことはみんな知ってるの Everybody knows it is a complete waste of time. ライプリヒ製薬の偉い人もきっと知ってるの Even the higher ups of Leiblik Pharmaceutical probably know. なのに研究してるふりだけはしなくちゃいけないの They still have to go about pretending to do research. I wonder why. It sounds like a waste to me. さあ、企業の考えることだからお金儲けにつながるんじゃないの Who knows, but it's a company we're talking about, so I bet it has to do with money. あ,あ、そんなこと私たちにすることはできないし、別に知りたくもないよ。But there is no way for us to know, and I don't really care. That's right, I've been meaning to ask you, but what do you mean that your mom is researching the third eye? In a nutshell, it basically means that. In each dimension, N may only be understood in its entirety. When viewed from a dimension at least n plus one. Um, I, I, some people would probably disagree that you have to do an embedding of a surface in order to understand it. Or do an embedding of a manifold in order to understand it. We humans, though, yes, it's true, we have a difficult time understanding like, curved spaces. Unless we embed them. It's just kind of the way our brain works. But, like in a holistic way, not taking into account the limitations of a human brain, like mathematically, you can describe something without, and you can do calculations in it without embedding it in a higher dimension. Anyway. Huh? It didn't sound very basic to me. What did she mean? Yosuruni! 私たちは四次元的な視覚を得ることで初めてこの世界の全貌が知覚できるのだと More than just n plus one dimensions. Let's see. Ooh, the, the Nash embedding theorem. General formula. Goodness. Oh, this is a bit complicated. Okay. Um, well, I can't do, I'm not going to do this on the fly, I think, during the recording. It's not a simple formula. It's not n plus one, though. Let me try that again.、Um, there is a. There is a、um, when you do the Google, there is a formula that shows up in the, one of the first image results M, 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 3m plus 11 over 2. I don't know if that's relevant. Okay. 
I had no idea what she was talking about. Like when the third eye has opened up or something. Yu's hand stopped typing there for an instant and she popped her neck loudly. She reached out for a cup and took a sip of coffee. I think yesterday you said something about evolution. About losing that organ thingy on the head, the um, pineal gland. No, no, not there. It's here, and it's called the third eye, and it has to do with supernatural powers. It's like... Like the third eye on the forehead of the Hindu god Shiva. Like they say in yoga about the Agya Chakra, or third eye chakra. Or the Austral Light Training by Sages. Well, that was not very much Japanese or rather long line in English. Or like an esoteric Buddhism with the famous monk Koko Daishi's ascetic training and invoking of the Kokuzo deity of space through the Kozuko Gunongiho. So, if I know this correct, this word correctly, ascetic is just like trying to think about nothing. Am I right about that? Hopefully. Or asceticism is like you try to free yourself from all desires. Yeah, that's, I, th I think that's what it is. Like, just have no desires. Perfect contentment. Like the all knowing eye in Tibetan Tantric Buddhism. Uh huh. I felt like I was being bombarded with exotic words. The conversation had completely left me behind. I think I mentioned it yesterday, but. When the third eye opens, true wisdom is apparent and all becomes visible, at least that's what they say. That's if the story is real. So your mom, you're saying your mom is just basically just researching Buddhism. One thing I, like, the main thing that comes to mind when I think of Buddhism is apparently they make really good barbecue. Anyway, uh, so let's see, that means, in summary, it goes something like this. Your mom is researching an ancient concept called the third eye or third perspective. And once someone has acquired the third eye, they can sense the fourth dimension and see the whole of the world. Except, if you want to, you have to, the universe is four-dimensional, and so you, if you had to embed it, if you wanted to embed it, you'd have to embed it to an even higher dimensional space. And that is the line with the legend of the third eye. That is in line with the legend of the third eye. Ma, so you got it. Does that about cover it? Well, to hear my mom tell it, the third eye and third perspective are the same. I don't quite get it. Why would a sense of the fourth dimension allow someone to understand the whole world? This is just time travel. <laughs> it's just like you open up your ability to time travel. Just in a lot of words, just like overly verbose. Or why is the sense of the fourth dimension necessary? We're seeing the world the way we are right now. I don't get the connection between the third eye, or third perspective, and the fourth dimension. There were lots of things I didn't get. The whole concept seemed to be beyond my understanding. Alright, break's over. You started working again without answering my question. Hey, you. Sorry, let's make that the end of today's lecture. The explanation from here 
is pretty hard. And it's pretty obvious. I'm busy, right? It's like, I don't want to actually bring up the Minkowski metric. <laughs> if you really want to know, next time I'll explain it in an easy to swallow way. You didn't say anything more. Okay. I decided to give up for the time being. I remembered it was still I was still holding the cup. I figured not drinking it would be a waste, so I drank it down. Gulp. Yuck, this was so bitter. And it was completely cold, too. Like my geometry <sighs> teacher in high school. <sighs> Describing her coffee, not her. Oh, I give up. You muttered this and looked down dejectedly. She leaned back in a chair and it squeaked. In the end, she hadn't found any new clues. Actually, she hadn't even gotten past the authorization screen. Access denied and valid name or password. Except this time, it doesn't lock you out after three tries, so it's merciful that way. That message had been displayed again and again, and it still sat in the middle of the screen. Aww. Oh. You was really down. So, you couldn't get it to the password? <sighs> nope. Don't you have any ideas? Uh -huh. Like what? I mean, when somebody sets a password, it is usually a word that has to do with them. A birthday, or phone number, or something short. Even somebody that wanted to think of something nobody would know would probably come up with a phrase related to their past. I mean, there is almost nobody that uses a meaningless combination of numbers and letters. Yes, they are. The lazy people who use the default use the suggested password. And then they save it in their web browser. Then they need to get into that thing on somebody else's computer and somehow they can't log into their Google account in which they had to save because that's a master password. Or they don't forget the master password for their last pass or something. And then because it was some random gibberish that was saved in their lap, their last pass cat like library or their browser they have no idea how to think of what it is and this is why i don't use default password i always use something that i know what it is even though that creates a security vulnerability now you have that little piece of information in case you want to hack into something i have so something of mine and try to steal my stuff but i don't think you're really going to get very far anyway if they did they would probably forget it and if they forgot it, then a password is meaningless. And then sometimes you forget the password to your encrypted hard drive, and as such, you lose everything in it. I know that, I've tried all the things I could think of. I tried the backwards and as an anagram and all possible patterns I could imagine. Have you tried your name yet, you? I mean, your name's so long, it better, it probably would make a good password, wouldn't it? But it's no good. I'm just a normal person when it comes to computers. I am no hacker or cracker. I don't have any illegal programs and can't just type one out right now. You stuck her hands up in the air, signaling her surrender. I know, Sara could probably do it, right? I remember that Sara was a top-level hacker. You said that Sara took first prize in some code-breaking contest, right? I'll bet she'd make a password-breaking program for you. Well, usually, the password-breaking is a character moment, so it's slightly more likely that the plot would actually have you finally guess the password, or the kid guess the password, as opposed to Sar just cracking it. Come on, eh? Maybe. You didn't seem keen on the idea. Why don't you ask her? I could, but I don't want to. I don't want to involve her in this. I thought that maybe she was still concerned about the criminal element of the idea. 
but you won't mind, you mind getting me, but you don't mind getting me involved. Well, kid, the answer to that is you just happen to walk in on her doing it. Well, you came and involved yourself. I suppose. But at this rate, you probably wouldn't find a clue during her lifetime. I wanted to help her out. As a way of thanking her for helping me. There is just one clue. You took a piece of paper from atop the console. What's that? This was inside my mom's machine. お母さんの研究室に忍び込んだことがあるの。もちろん、失踪した父親の手がかりを探すためよ。部屋に入ると、パソコンの電源が入れっぱなしだったの。中を覗くと、ご丁寧にパスワードとタイトルの付けられたテ
how about about how many characters were in that password? You said it was in Japanese, right? About how many characters was it? I don't remember very well, maybe 10 characters, give or take. Okay, so if one line is a character... You might have to, it might be you'll have to Unicode it. Was it all written in Japanese? Any numbers? I'm pretty sure it was just Japanese. I didn't remember any numbers or anything else. Although I heard in that Japanese voice line something that sounded like katakana, which is a type of Japanese character, but that wasn't in the English sentence. I wonder which end of this is the top. So? You got me. Of course it could be written vertically. No way. If you printed out a text file, why would it come out as a barcode? So? It's the binary? So it's the Unicode? No hints? Hinto? Hints? If I don't know the answer, how can I give you a hint? But you have to remember something, right? Like, did it have to do with food or a person's name? How many characters are in Yu's name? One, Yu, right? B, Se, E, Fa, Ru, Ka, Na. So, one, is remember this is Japanese. Now, oh, but they weren't, they weren't, they weren't hiragana, they were kanji. Fui. Well, I'll count the hir what the hiragana would be anyway. So, U is one, B is two, Se, Se is three, E is four, Ha is five, Ru is six, Ka is seven, Na is eight, but it's again, it's kanji, it's not, but kanji should be, there should be fewer kanji than here. So maybe, I don't know, whatever. I saw it, but only for a second. But how could you forget something so important? Well, at least I know my address. And phone number, and birthday, and my social security number, and... Interesting localization, because this was in Japanese, and the Japanese would not say social security number, I would assume. I even know... My name. Dun dun dun! Now who is forgetting the important things? Oh, you didn't jump on it. I looked again at the paper we thought contained the password. I was obsessed with solving the puzzle we had found. It was frustrating. Now who is forgetting the important things? What could I say to that? It's not like I wanted to lose my memory. Watch this. I'll remember everything just to show you. But first, I had to figure this out. I had my mind set on it. I almost felt like solving this was a rite of passage that would help restore my memory. I got it. Could it be? I thought for a second. I don't usually save scum, but here I am definitely save scumming. Well, I'll save scum in subsequent plays because I don't usually save scum on like my first run through of these multiple ending games, right? I just go all the way through and get to whatever ending it gets me to. But 
I am definitely saving this one. Okay, what if I turned it over? Well, in 2002, printers didn't really print on the back. What if I turned it upside down? Well, it would be the same as it is right side up. Nothing really different. What if I heat it with the flame? No, that didn't work in... Um, what's it called? The National Treasure probably won't work here. What if I ripped it in two? What if I tilt it? That's Japanese. What if I wad it up? Oh, well. I thought that if I turned it over, I might be able to read something. None of those real, this is just something that's neutral that would give back to the choice probably. I turned the paper over and held it up to the light. Still probably a Japanese character, so I can't, like, get it. It was no good. Turning it over showed nothing new. So, did you figure it out? Yep, I figured out that I can't read it this way. I told you it's impossible. I tried all kinds of things. Hmm, let's see. What should I do? Could it be? I thought for a second. What if I turn it upside down? I thought maybe I could read something if it turned the paper upside down. I turned it upside down. Uh, same thing. It was no good turning the paper upside down, showed nothing good. I thought that if I folded it in half, maybe I could read something. I looked at it and folded it in half. Huh. There is a symmetry, the kind of vague symmetry there. わかった。やっぱり無理なんだよ。私だっていろいろ試したんだからさ。ほらね、言わんこっちゃない。Okay. I thought maybe if I heat it with the flame, I could read it. Hey, you don't have a lighter, do you? Huh? Lighter? Huh? Lighter? Masaka, Iraira stiktakara, tabako demo suoteki? Don't tell me you went to calm your nerves with the smoke. Dame, dame! Tabako wa hatachi ni natte kara! You're too young to smoke tobacco. I know that. I wanted to use it on the paper. Oh, yes, chaoteki? You want to burn it? Playing with fire is dangerous. Besides, this paper is the only clue I've got. I won't let you burn it. That's not what I mean. Well, what then? I thought that if I heated the paper with a flame, something might appear. That's not how a printer works, though. 
ギャグだよね。You're kidding, right? Yeah, haha, I'm just joking. And I figured out that I couldn't read it that way. So what if I start tilting it a little? I might be able to see something. どうわかったやっぱり無理果たしたっていろいろ試したんだからさどうやっぱはっ Finally. Got it. Listen, if you take the paper and set it like this. What? Let's see. Yeah, theoretically, you could have, like, by first looking at the picture, figured out you could get to here by tilting it vertically. Til but the problem is, I didn't know the Japanese characters that well. And so it made it harder for me than a Japanese person doing this puzzle. So I had to just kind of guess and check until I, this, this happened. The empty fall sky. A single kaku calls out. Brings a chill to me. What is this? Just, just let me see that. You grabbed the slip of paper from my hand. Then she copied me and set the paper sideways in the same way. <gasps> you, you're right. <laughs> amazing, kid. You're amazing. You grabbed my hand and shook it happily. But she didn't stop there. She pulled me close in a big bear hug. Squeeze. My face was pressed hard against her bust. It was a nice fit. A little too nice. I struggled for air. I give up. Give mercy. I almost felt dangerously excited by the softness of her. Yatta! Yatta, yatta, yatta! We did it, we did it, yeah? Finally, you let me go. You jumped around gleefully like a rabbit. I was glad she was happy, even if she did almost crush me. Watching you all happy like that seemed to wash away all my irritation and fatigue. The stress I was feeling simply faded away. Well, now you have to type the password in, though. It was like the winter frost melting away under the spring sun. So, I get it now. You can't see it from right above it. If you look from the side, I see it now. But why do you suppose it came out in a barcode like this? Printer is probably in bad shape. Think so? It's hard to believe that would be make a print like this. 
I don't care about that now. That might come up later. Anyway, as long as I have the password, things are fine. The empty fall sky, a single cuckoo calls out, brings a chill to me. I think this is a variation on the famous haiku. The empty June sky, a single cuckoo calls out, brings a chill to me. By Shiki Masaoka. So if I input it like this, The empty fall sky, a single cuckoo calls out, brings a chill to me. Wow. Alright, let's try this for a password. A recharged you face the screen triumphantly. But Access denied invalid name or password. But she still couldn't get into the sea level information. Just then, uh, are? what in the the screen went blank. What just happened? I don't know, but it looks like it automatically shut down the authorization screen. Huh? After a moment, the screen returned to normal. You pecked away at the keyboard and called up the authorization screen again. Access denied. Currently, this name cannot be logged in. What is this? So it was the same. What does this mean? Maybe I entered the wrong password too many times and it activated some kind of protection. In other words, Leme has completely denied access to my mom's name. So... So... So we'll have to give up for the time being, I guess. You shrugged exaggeratedly. And you went to so much trouble to read this for me, kid. But from the start, there is no guarantee that what is on that paper is the password. It would make more sense if this were some kind of hint that my mom uses to remember the password. It wouldn't make much sense to call the file password otherwise. It would be too dangerous. I wondered why Yu's mom would choose this poem. I wondered what was hidden in the 17 syllables of this poem. There is no answer or end to my questions. A while after that, we heard that Takeshi, from Takeshi that repairs on the warehouse had been completed with no problems. We finally gathered again in the conference room. We were killing time. We still couldn't think of any way to escape. Since still, we didn't want to feel like we were completely wasting our time. So we all decided to wander around the Mu one more time. As we made the rounds, Takeshi said, what do you think the record is for running from one end of Lemu to the other? I think we should try to give the chicken sandwiches a completely new flavor somehow. He made a number of stupid comments. We all, with the exception of Tsumugi, of course, listened half exasperated and half interested. We all knew, as long as we were doing something, it kept our minds off things we couldn't change. 
like about how there was no way out or remembering where we were. We decided to meet at 8 p.m. for dinner. Everyone was, everyone was left to wander around freely until then. I decided to help you try to repair the infirmary scanning machine. Of course, it was kind of an indirect thank you to her for looking after me when I was feeling down two days before. All right then, shall we get started? You plop down on the floor with the tools and parts spreading out the repair manual. Of course, the repairs were you's job. I was just there to help. I was getting used to handling her, handing her the tools and was getting better at predicting which tool would be used next. I thought that if there was an exam for expertise in handle, handing pliers or screws, I would pass with flying colors. But the repairs were tougher than I imagined. <laughs> you grunted as she stared at the diagram. You still haven't figured it out? Maybe if you'd be quiet, I might. Okay, does she have a multimeter? That's kind of important. It's not here. You searched all over but couldn't find the cause of the problem. You said everything looked normal. In other words, there was no sign of anything broken. Jeez, this good-for-nothing, stupid, idiotic. Okay. Arg. All of a sudden, you lost her control, pounded on the diagram, and kicked the toolbox. <sighs> hey, that's not very grown-up of you. You know, you could you could ask Sora about how to fix it later. You want to clean up for now? No, sorry. Hey, there, so here the two of you are. Oh, hey, Takeshi. What are you doing here, Takeshi? Nothing really, I just thought I'd get some coffee or something to wake me up. At 6.57 p.m. So you, you are. So what are you doing? What about you two? What are you and the kid up to? I don't know. You can't tell by just looking. I don't know. I'm asking you to If I could, do you think I'd be asking? Takeshi, did you think you could lend us a... Do you think you could lend us a hand? Yes, I don't know. Can you open the things? Sure, I can do that. Do you want help picking up this stuff? Yeah. You split up and started picking up the tools strewn around the room. Screwdrivers and screws had flown all the way up, all the way to the walls. Uh, do you think we got everything? No, there's one more right, right there. There was something in the corner. Hmm? Hey, what's this? Takeshi picked up something that looked like an electric plug. No, it was an electric plug. The cable continued disappearing under the floor. It was embedded there. I wonder what this is supposed to power. In the wall was an outlet the same as in the home. Takeshi stuck the plug into the wall. Hey, something is moving. Hey, it looks like it was for that machine over there. Which means... It would appear unplugged. Now, <laughs> Hey, by the way, Takeshi shot a question at me and you who are speechless. What were you doing here anyway? Uh, nothing. Huh? Just then someone else appeared and bailed us out. It was Tsumugi. 
But when she saw us, she... <laughs> she licked her tongue in an irritated way, turned to leave the room. The door opened again immediately, like that Simpsons meme. This time it was Sara. It could have been my imagination, but she looked kind of angry about something. Sara stood her ground, blocking the exit so that Tsumugi couldn't leave. Get out of the way. Quit running, running away and answer. I said, out of the way. I said, give me an answer. It seemed like the two of them were fighting, but I wonder why. I couldn't think of any reason for the two of them. The two of them would want to fight. If you keep shouting, the three of them will hear. I don't care. You two, what's up? Takeshi asked this as he approached them. That's what I want to know. Samugi said this mixed with a sigh. And then she gave Takeshi the evil eye. What are you all planning anyway? What are we what are you planning? Stop with this nonsense already. Hey Mayo, what happened? You said it as if to calm Sara's nerves. She still looked pretty riled up. She was staring at Tsumugi bitterly. Tsumugi? Huh? For an instant I thought that Tsumugi drew up her face, drew her face up sadly. Drew up her face, oh, okay. Sa, dokinasai! Get out of my way. As she turned around, Tsumugi tried to push Sara out of the way. Sara resisted. So what? Did you run away from him the same way you're trying to run from me now? Sara said that as the two of them wrestled. Tsumugi stopped moving. So you did. Sara crossed her arms tightly. You suck. You are inhuman. <laughs> Sumugi lifted up her right hand as if to hit Sara. But Takeshi grabbed her hand. Hey, calm down. Sara didn't miss her chance. Sara open palm echoed on Tsumugi's cheek. <laughs> You little... Ah. ah! The raging Tsumugi threw off Takeshi and stole from Sara whatever it was she was holding. She went to throw whatever it was she had had against the wall. <laughs> but she stopped an instant before. Yeah, Stop! Takeshi went to grab her arm. Tsumugi's arm went slack and something slipped to the floor. It clattered loudly. Something glittered as it bounced. It looked like a pendant. Sara scooped up the pendant as if she were picking up a fragile piece of ice. Sara's back quivered tensely. Sara looked down, dropping her head. Then she squeezed her fist around the pendant. Mayo? Mayo? You said it softly, but Sara didn't appear to hear. Sara lifted her face. Biting her lips, she glared at Tsumugi. Both of her eyes were welling up with tears. Tsumugi stared coldly at Sara as if looking down at her from far above. Sara withstood the glare and stared back at Tsumugi, enraged. 
She continued to resist silently, trying not to shed tears, not to sob. The scene was just like... Just like... Just like, how do I... how to put it? It was like the emotion that was about to explode to the surface had sunk away to nothingness. The next thing I knew, Tsumugi had turned to leave the room. Sara still focused her glare at Tsumugi. I looked back and forth between the two of them. Finally, I let my eyes trail off after Tsumugi. Yu was there to help Sara, but first I wanted to find out what the fight was all about. I ran out of the infirmary and called out to Tsumugi. Hey, Tsumugi! But she ignored me and headed for the corridor. Oh, why does it always turn out like this? Even if I was tired of everything, I had no choice but to chase after her. Hey, wait. She shot me a glance, but did not slow her step. I said, wait. I caught up to her and grabbed her arm, trying to stop her. But she shook off my hand. I told you never to touch me. Sorry. And Tsumugi started walking again as if nothing had happened. Still, I continued after her without giving up. I started talking to her as I, as I walked next to her, peering at her face. Why are you fighting with Sara? It's none of your business. Tsumugi answered without looking at me, letting me know my questions were unwanted. Don't go poking your nose into things that don't concern you. How can this not concern me? I thought I had said enough. It, re it really probably doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't have any right to go involving myself in people's private affairs. But still... Well, no, well, actually it might have something to do with you. What? Tsumuki strode away. I stood stunned for a moment. I, I soon pulled myself together and started after her again. No matter how much I called out to her, Tsumugi didn't respond. At last, I caught up with her again. We were at the gate for boarding the jellyfish condola. Finally, Tsumugi pulled up there. And it didn't look as though she had stopped there with any intention of riding the gondola. But it didn't look like she was going to move elsewhere either, or even sit down for that matter. Her eyes were just trained on the half-transparent gondola, which, which was partially visible beyond the gate. Hey. It looked like she was completely ignoring me. You don't have to respond, just listen to what I'm going to say. I won't ask you to trust us anymore. But that doesn't mean that you have to fight with anyone. We're all in the same situation here. We have to help each other. Tsumugi turned, to fa turned and faced me. What insightful comment. And don't joke around. I'm just telling you exactly how I feel. I figured that I should take the fact that she responded to me as a slight chance change in attitude. I shot her another question. Why do you think we're your enemies? What reason could you possibly have? I already told you I can't trust you. You are all acting suspiciously. I don't know whether you are acting of your own will, but still. I don't get it, you. What exactly is suspicious? You are trying to do the exact same thing that you did before. The same as what before? If, if you really have lost your memory, then maybe you don't know. Time traveled! She time traveled and she doesn't believe, she doesn't realize that she time traveled. Well, maybe that's not it, but that suddenly came to my mind. Like, it's like, you know, the end of Never 7, where they try to make it look, see, make, try to trick somebody into thinking that that person time traveled. There's got to be something going on behind the scenes with this accident as well. Well, we all know that. 
You mean... You mean to tell me you've experienced the same thing as this before? Samugi stared at me intensely. I took her look as a yes. In that case... I wondered if the same held true for me. Oh, it sure does. So that means you can foresee what is going to happen, right? Eh? Huh? I'm right, aren't I? So it's not just me, then. But then how come I can see into the future all of the sudden? All of the sudden? Article mistakes. They, like, definitely did not have a native English speaker on hand when making this localization. See the future. No, the feeling I had was less one of seeing it and more like knowing the future, or possibly having experienced it before. Did I know it? Had I experienced it? Why? This would be much more mysterious if you had not played another one of the games in the series before. <laughs> that was... Because the same thing was happening again. That's it! You and I must have traveled to the past, Tsumugi! Time slip? Traveled to the past? Here it goes again. Yep. The theory I had, I had hit upon excited me. I was sure it almost had to be. I have the same sense. I know the future. Back in the generator room, I knew that the room was built up, the room had built up heat. And take this morning, I had a feeling that there would be trouble in the warehouse. And when I first met Sara, I felt like I had experienced something like it before. And I think I've probably experienced the same thing in my past. Tsumugi just stared at me. I could clearly see that she was flustered. Hey, tell me your story. When I asked Tsumugi that, it was as if she snapped back to reality, her expression and the look on in her eyes back to normal. My story? What? Are you kidding? As long as I can not tell if you're in this with the others, I can't tell you anything. I felt dejected, like I had finally found someone that could sh I could, that could share my feelings but couldn't. Sin, I told you before, it would be best if you, to, for you if you stayed away from me. And me too. Why? You really get bogged down in the why of things, don't you? The why is not important. She crossed her arms and said this forcefully. But if there is a reason, it is so that things turn out the best for you. That's how you get the good ending, is you just don't know my story. My story is not the good ending. Okay, whatever. For example, Your memory loss could be because of them. Huh? That was a shocking idea. The words just about stopped my heart for a moment. What? There's no way. I had never been entertained. I had never even entertained that idea. Samugi turned to walk away from me, ignoring me in my state of dismayed confusion. I didn't have any power left to chase after her. Ah, so da. So let Oh, and there's one more thing. O shaberi tsui de ni. Atashi mo sono mirai yo chito yaro shite agemashou ka. As long as we are shooting the breeze, shall I predict a bit more of the future for you? I slowly lifted my face and looked at Tsumugi. She looked serious all of a sudden. Tsumugi predicted that... If you continue to let yourself be used by them... On the 7th... You will die. But you'll go back in time, so it's okay. Yes, 
we, he will definitely die, but he will go back in time, so whatever. I trudged along, looking down. Well, I think I'll end the recording there. It's a good stopping spot.